What was the impact that had on you and on your family? Um, it was it was extremely difficult. It was traumatizing. It was an already emotional experience for us learning that we you know we were going to lose our daughter. To add on the pressure of having to find a state you know that allowed a midterm abortion, finding flights, hotels, arranging care for our six year old daughter. Um, it just added so much unnecessary stress um, to an already difficult situation. And, you know, once I was back home, I fell into a very dark space because I didn't have time to grieve, um, you know, my soon to be lost child because I was, you know, bombarded with having to figure out logistics just to get health care. And so once I was able to actually breathe, when I got back to Tennessee, I just went to a very, you know, dark place um, with depression. Ali, I am so sorry that you have gone through this, and I am sorry that you have gone through this at the hands of your own government. Mark, for every woman like Ali, there is a doctor who's trying to do the right thing, and we should note that four OBGYNs are involved in this lawsuit as well. Talk to me about the pitfalls doctors are in in these states that they are running into when they're determining if someone meets a state's very narrow exception. That's exactly right. Look, what happened to Ali is happening across states that have banned abortion. And as Ali's story shows, abortion is an essential component of necessary health care. Abortion bans that have criminal penalties that criminalize doctors' practice of medicine are putting pregnant people in danger all across the country. As you said, doctors are frightened of providing essential abortion care to their patients because they're they're afraid of running afoul of these abortion bans and finding themselves either criminally charged or potentially losing their medical license. So that's why the Center for Reproductive Rights um, filed a suit earlier this year in Texas and then this week in Tennessee, Idaho, and uh, an action in Oklahoma because uh, we're asking the courts to clarify exactly when doctors are allowed to provide this essential abortion care under the narrow exceptions um, of the state's abortion bans. Because look, what happened to Allie shouldn't happen to anyone else. Doctors ought to be able to practice medicine in consultation with their patients. And so we're trying to make sure that that happens uh, going forward in these states. Allie, you know, this is a conversation that for decades has been incredibly heated. Nationally, and the conversation is just really different when you're having it with a friend, a neighbor, with someone who's actually living with the reality of this policy. I wonder for you, having been touched firsthand by these policies, what you think the national debate, the national discourse misses? I think they miss the fact that abortion isn't a one size fits all procedure. Um, you know, the pro life um, standpoint is it shouldn't be used as birth control. Like that's that's their argument. Um, and there are so many women out here that need it for a life-saving reason. And I personally don't know anybody that uses abortion for birth control. I just feel like that's very far-fetched. But the reality of abortion care is like me and many other women, these were wanted pregnancies. You know, my husband and I, we tried to conceive and we did and we planned to have a baby and everything just went wrong. You know, it, it wasn't anything that we did wrong. It wasn't anything my doctor did wrong. But at that point, I had to choose, you know, do I continue my pregnancy knowing that our daughter is going to die anyways and put my own life at risk? Or do I just terminate? So that way I know I can be here for my six-year-old daughter. And I've been fortunate with sharing my story that I've had a lot of pro-life people come to me and say, your story has changed my mind. I never thought about it like that. I always thought it was, you know, people using it for fun or whatever. And so I feel like stories like mine can reach more people and can open that conversation up for people that may have never thought of it like this. Right, Mark, I mean, more and more people across this country are beginning to understand that when you say abortion is health care, 
really understand what, what it is that that means. Planned Parenthood is set to resume abortion services in Wisconsin Monday. Of course, after a judge ruled the state's abortion law does not ban consensual abortions, but the legal battle over abortion it is not over in Wisconsin. But I wonder, as you are someone who has legal cases in multiple states, as you watch what's happening in Wisconsin, if it gives you a glimmer of hope that there is a legal path to fight back. What gives me hope is people like Emily who are stepping forward and telling their stories of exactly how abortion bans have been, um, have have traumatized their, their lives and have, have put their own lives and health at risk. People are, are, become, are brave and they're coming forward and telling the stories and the public is listening. And every single state that abortion has been on the ballot in the last you know, year, uh, abortion rights have won. And I think we'll continue to see that happen. And so I, you know, look, we are, we are fighting a battle state by state by state. It is a proliferating uh, battle. But, uh, you know, that is where I'm getting my help from, is from people like Allie.